And we are back. And we thought we were recording, but I guess it wasn't recording the whole time. That sucks. We had like at least 20, 15 minutes of content, but it's all good. We're back in action. This is Sumer Basin, your host. We're not with Scott Frost tonight. Where the hell are you, Scott Frost? Where in the world are you? He has actually moved to a different location. He now moved, he moved to uh, Bee Caves, Bee Caves Road here in Austin, Texas. He used to live up north, which is about 15 minutes away. But now he, he lives a little further. So it's been a little more infrequent in terms of getting podcasts in, which suck. Scott, where are you, man? Let's make a podcast happen. He's been pretty busy. He's working at a new spot called Acceleration Sports or Acceleration Training, one of the two. Correct me if I'm uh, off, Scott. And uh, he is now training their athletes to become even better athletes, infuse a sense of well-being because performance is really at the the peak of your well-being. So keep doing your damn thing, Scott. Love it. All those athletes are, are getting something very special. So keep doing what you're doing. And uh, yeah, I thought I'd, I'd talk to you guys as the, the end of the year is approaching and we have done a lot of amazing things in this past year. Train Life Fit has gone through quite an evolution from from day one of just envisioning and having the idea incepted into my mind and then for it to actually materialize and become something real. And now we have a community of people that are supporting each other and becoming the strongest and healthiest version of themselves. They're keeping themselves accountable. They're, they're there when, when things go wrong. They, they're there to share in the experiences of falling and getting back up and recommitting to their goals. And in the gym, it's cool to see how everyone becomes a coach. Everyone's able to coach each other on movements and, give them things that have worked for them. Now it becomes kind of this back and forth rather than me just sitting there and yelling at the class. It's everyone is involved. So I love how TLF has evolved. I love how amazing it it really is. We just had our one year anniversary party and had an amazing turnout. Everyone that was there was supposed to be there. And so it was just, it was beautiful all, all in all. So I can't, you know, I can't be more grateful for for everything this year and and even everyone that showed up all the support you've given family friends tlf family love you all so so much love you all for working so hard busting your butt every single day in the gym for for showing up really that's that's like 99 percent. just show up when you show up for yourself and you show up for the people around you a lot of beautiful things change not not just inside the gym but really everywhere else because i'm starting to believe really starting to believe that the way you do everything is the way you do everything (laughs) so every little thing you do is the way you do everything in life so how are you approaching things in life are you doing it halfway in or are you all the way in so that's a very important concept i want to leave you guys with as we begin the start of the new year i'm actually joined today with my roommate young toe Next to me right now, he kind of walked in the door and I was like, dude, you want to do a podcast? And he was like, okay, <laughs> I'll do it. And uh, here he is with me. What's up, Young Toe? Say hello. How's it going, everybody? Yeah. So he, uh, it's kind of cool how he got back in touch with me. I haven't, I hadn't talked to him in like six years. Holy moly. Something like that. And we met up at Westwood Country Club where I used to work at. And we see Country Club where um, I, I gained a lot. I learned a lot there, but. I decided it was time to move. He was working as a lifeguard and then front desk at the time. And I happened to train him for a bit. I think I made you throw up, didn't I? You did. <laughs> you did. It was terrible. <laughs> Sorry, man. Uh, training has definitely changed ever since then. It's not, not the purpose. But, yeah, I, re- I remember training him for a while. And then we, we uh, hung out quite a bit on his birthday. And he, we got crunk, got down, got wild. That was it. And then we just lost contact for a while. And all of a sudden, as I went on my journey and as he went on his path, we somehow divinely connected again. And actually, his godmother was looking for a space to change her body, change her life, change her mindset. And uh, I guess she was talking to Young about it. And Young had happened to mention me. And 
all of a sudden, the next thing you know, she's in for an assessment, and now she's part of the family. So it's pretty nuts. Uh, I remember, I remember the conversation you were telling me about the conversation with with Kim, and still to this day, it trips me out that it came full circle to the point where you joined, she's joined, and her husband Larry's joined. Her kids, I mean, her kids want to do pull-ups now. They're crawling around everywhere. They they want to do cool stuff. And, uh, yeah, tell, tell us a little bit about that conversation. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really interesting how it all came about or how we all meet met each other later down the road again. Um, pretty much it was my godmother one day. She was just um, – I got, she got tired of not, not being – active so she pretty much just asked me what my thoughts were about working out and I told her well you know uh, I don't know much but you know I'm I'm sure she would get uh, a lot of uh, help through personal training so she she showed interest in working out so I told her you know just go try out one look try out one of the gyms or whatever that we have here in Austin and so she pretty much she was like you know I want to work out during lunch, I, th- I think I can knock out a workout during lunch, and then go to work. That way, I, I I can at least feel good again. So she pretty much, but she didn't know what to do. So I told her just go check out some trainers, and um, try go talk to the trainers at Twenty Four or Golds or any gym or, that she wanted. And she picked two these two gyms, um, and she went and talked to him and then i talked to her the next d- the following day and she i asked her how it went and she was pretty discouraged i i wouldn't say discouraged she was just kind of she felt pressured into um signing a contract with them cuz they really forced her to you know they wanted her to sign right away so um she, she explained it to me as if she was talking to used car salesman and I and I, I kind of felt bad for her because you know I didn't want her to feel that way, so um, I, I I remembered immediately in my head I was like man maybe I wonder where Samir is because I knew he had his own he had he opened another place out in uh, at the Triangle or did a boot camp so I figured she might be able to try that out and sure like we so we went on the internet we found him and she was like oh my god he's at the uh, apartments literally around the corner and literally from their house is only about two minutes you literally throw a rock and it'll it'll hit it (laughs) so she i told her i was like you know what uh from what i remember he's not like any of the trainers that you'll ever 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 meet in a gym he's totally different and he'll make you really feel awesome uh just even talking to him is genuinely like good conversations it's good it's awesome so she was kind of skeptical up about about going at first because she, you know, she kind of got a sour taste in her mouth from the first two. So I told her, I was like, look, you know, the worst thing that can happen is is the same thing, you know. But the best thing, who knows? We could, I don't know, we can start hanging out there at the gym. So she was like, all right, I'll, I'll go try it. So she went and talked to him that day, and then uh, I talked to her the following day, following day, and I asked her about it. And you could literally see, like, her face, like, light up because she was so happy about it. She felt so excited to tell me about it. And pretty much she was like, you know, uh, I talked to him for, like, hours. I was like, oh, yeah? She was like, well, it was like two hours. She was gone forever, what my godfather said. So I asked her about it, and she was like, you know what? He talked to me about everything. He showed me, like, these movements, and he did an assessment. And uh, I feel really sore. I was like, what do you mean? What, like, why? She was like, he had me do these couple of movements, you know, just to check out how my body uh, reacts to the certain movements and whatnot and see where I'm at physically. And she was like, I'm really sore. And I was like, well, what did he have you do? And she was like, well, mainly we worked on a lot of breathing. I was like, so <laughs> she was like, my abs are sore. I was like, that's crazy. I wonder who made you do. So she showed me. I was like, oh, man, that seems hard. But, I mean, ever since that day for her going, she, it literally changed her, like, whole mindset. She, it, it just changed everything about her. And she's more upbeat about 
uh, working out. She's she, she gets to the point where she's like, I need to work out now. So it's it's, it's kind of weird because going from before, she was like, uh, just seeing her before, she never really like said anything about working out. But now it's like when she skips a workout, she gets angry. So <laughs> it's pretty interesting to see her that way. And then how I came about was, you know, I found out Samir was um, looking for a roommate. So uh, I talked to him. Then I moved. He let me move in. And, man, the, my journey's gone from it started just with talking with my godmother. And then, uh, man, ever since then, it's uh-huh. it's there now. Like, we've it's been a long journey but it's been a really fun one um there's some ups and downs but you know just getting back it it feels great yeah that's pretty much my story (laughs) yeah really in the grand scheme of things it hasn't been that long since you moved in Not really. looking at the picture of him uh on my instagram right now the before and after if you haven't seen it yet definitely check it out on my instagram or even on the group page of train life it You'll see it as the Vietnamese guy. <laughs> uh, he's wearing a black uh, long sleeve shirt on the left, and he's wearing this nice snazzy shirt with a tie because he went to a wedding. On the right, he's in the middle there. It's pretty wild to see how how much he's changed. It, it trips me out. I know, like for him, it's hard to see at times, but that's because he probably sees, sees himself in the mirror every day but when you look at the picture from day one to where he is now like it's just it's pretty surreal you can see like his definition his jawline you can see his his smile you can see his body it's a lot it's just shrunken it's just got more more lean which is awesome so loving it so far man loving how far you've come and hearing about kim's story is it's also pretty funny and and surreal and and just just it's just cool to hear from an outside perspective for his, because for me as a coach I, i'm just doing the best i can to give as much value as possible in an hour or even 40 minutes when that person walks in the door to make them feel as amazing as possible so if i can do that with one person oh it makes my day i mean i'm eternally grateful to the fact that i'm able to give that to somebody else that's that's all i want and uh yeah i mean you've you've done a lot in a very short time you moved in here didn't know what to expect you started rooming together then you started coming to classes you weren't sure how many times a week you were supposed to go we started slow and the next thing you know you were doing two days and uh now you're here and this new phase of, of your life and and you're finishing up your finals and young's doing uh uh, all the requirements for nursing school, right? Yeah, yes. nursing school. And uh, he's pretty busy with that, but he's making time for his body. And, and I know at times it can be difficult to, to make time for that because sometimes we lose track of of how to, to balance everything. Sometimes when, stuff's, when stress is in your face, it, it can be very difficult to prioritize the most important game piece. And the game piece is you. You are the game piece moving through our life. And uh, yeah, but I, I'm still so proud of everyone, even despite the stresses, like they still are able to bounce back. They're still able to recommit to themselves. And I think that is, is probably one of the best pieces of guidance I can, I can implore and invite everyone to keep in their minds as the new year comes, comes uh, up, up here very soon. Even when you fall off the horse, you fall straight on your ass really, really hard. As long as you recommit every single time to yourself, you're still in, in the direction. You're still moving in the direction of your goals. You're still moving in the direction of a life of well-being, a life of vitality, a life where you're more fulfilled. Because when you stop recommitting to yourself, then you're, you're a slave to something else. That's not you. So I wanted to definitely leave you guys with that. But I do want to ask Mr. Young here right now. What have you learned, man, in the past few months? Because I keep, I keep saying a year, but I know for, for us, like for us rooming together and working together in the gym and changing the way you eat and live.